Welcome into the Pixwise NFL show. We're about to cover week 15 of this exciting and intriguing NFL football season. Everybody, thank you so much, audience, for watching us and liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, all that good stuff, whether you're watching on YouTube or Spotify. We appreciate you so much. As always, I'm Rachel Von Oranya, your host, joined by my lovely co-host, Jeff Reinbold. Jeff, how you doing today? I'm great tonight, OJ. I am great. Hey, you killed it, girl. You absolutely killed it on your totals. I killed it on my totals and just about nothing else. Let's get into that. Let's recap last week a little bit. There's a lot to unpack here, okay? Um, Jeff, you're handing out some really nice compliments to me. I did go 3-0 and on my point totals. You, on the other hand, you just flat out went 4-0 and with your picks against the spread last week, man. How you feeling about that? I'm feeling good about it because we're making some people some money, and that's what we're here for. And if people will, who watch this on YouTube and Spotify and all the platforms that it comes on, if you just listen to Game Day OJ, you're going to get some money. You're going to make some money. No, it's starting to – it might have started out that way early in the season, but now they just better be listening to you. And I'm telling you right now, I'm going to start listening to you. <laughs> I'm going with whatever you pick from now on, Okay. Um, so week 14 was a lot of fun in the NFL, lots to unpack. Okay. Like I have some questions too. Like, should we be alarmed about the Steelers? Have the Eagles finally found their franchise quarterback? Um, and then, you know, some, some notes that I have written down the Packers, they moved to number one in the NFC. Um, we have the game of the century, right? With the Browns and the Ravens. That was fantastic. Um, how much longer is the Taysom Hill experiment going to last? Uh, what did you notice or what are your thoughts on week 14? I thought it was a great week of football. And like you said, all of those storylines were, were something that we really need to talk about and follow. And we start with Pittsburgh. And, uh, you know, this is what we said about Pittsburgh last week, OJ, that people have to be careful because they, they ran off to that 11-0 start. But they have a chance to lose four of their last five. They've lost two in a row. They've got Cincinnati, which should be a get-right game, but it's in Cincinnati. And then they have uh, they have the Colts, and then they finish with the Browns in Cleveland. So that's not the way you want to go into the playoffs. If you're a Steeler fan, you're going to have some concerns, especially about their lack of ability to run the football. They got Pouncey, their center back. They, they also got the running back back, and they still didn't run the ball. It's almost like running the football is an afterthought for them, and they're starting to get a little chewed up on defense. Yeah, they are. My favorite part about that Steelers uh, game was Juju before the game. He's on TikTok. You know, he likes to have fun and whatnot. And I don't blame him. I would, too, if I was young, handsome, and rich and playing the game of football, right? That's awesome. But he did dance on the Bills logo in the center of the field. And you got to win the game if you do stuff like that. So I love to just nitpick stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure week 15, we got some really good matchups as well. So we can go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, we have the Bills and the Broncos. The Bills are 10 and 3. The Broncos are 5 and 8. And they're playing Saturday football. I'm here for it. Uh, the Bills, they're favored by 6.5. They're playing in Mile High Stadium. Uh, the point total is set at 50. We've had a little shift throughout the week, but it's at 50 right now as of Wednesday. Okay. Josh Allen. He's re-entered MVP discussions. He's by no means the favorite that he was to win MVP early on in the season, right? But he's playing at that level, at that caliber again after having that brief slump. Um, a lot of that has to do with his connection to Stefan Diggs, right? Stefan Diggs, he's so far throughout this uh, season, he's caught 100 of 136 targets for whopping 1,167 yards and five receiving touchdowns. Now, the Broncos... They're on the other side of the spectrum, right? Drew Locke is only completing 53% of his passes right now. And he has as many interceptions as he does touchdowns. That's 13. 13 and 13. Um, but we saw Drew Locke play really good last week against a very good secondary, okay? So Drew Locke, he's got weapons. He's got tools up there in Denver. Melvin Gordon, Noah Fant, Jerry Judy, uh, Philip Lindsay. But is it going to be enough to stop this red-hot Buffalo team? Yeah, and don't forget, you know, Hamler's a great player, too, and that other rookie sure. receiver. And think about it next year, and I know we don't talk Tim about Patrick. Patrick, but when they get, you know, Sutton back, that, they're mm -hmm. going to have as good a receiving core as there is. I just don't know if I trust Locke. 
The Bills are on fire. The Bills are still playing for an awful lot, OJ, because they got to clinch that East Eastern Division title. Uh, this is a this is a trap game, however. They just came off of that huge win. Uh, they're one two in a row. They're on the road. It's Mile High Stadium. It's going to be cold, but I just really believe in this Bills team. I've gone from being uh, somewhat skeptical of them to now believing that you know. Josh Allen has matured so much. You don't see the, you know, the crazy plays that you saw the first two years of his existence in the NFL, the, the errant throws, the fumbles, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I like their receiving core. Their defense really played well last week. They played better than I thought they could. So I'm going to take the Bills in this one, and I think that uh, they'll cover the six and a half, and I think I'm going to take the under. Now, you know me in the under, so I, I, may, I may just – I may ask you, what do you like? Do you like the under or do you like the over in this one? Um, in this game, I think, I think I'm going to take the under as well. And, uh, you know, I was looking up some numbers and stuff because I was really torn on this one, right? But the two teams average a combined 47.4 points a game. That's 2.6 fewer than the total yards for this matchup. And not only that, I actually have Denver covering in this game. And to be honest with you, they, it looks to me like they actually play better away than they do at home. I was looking at the points scored at home versus away, and they're a much better away team offensively than they are at home. But I digress. Neither one of these teams can stop the run. Okay, the Broncos defense is allowing, on average, 131 yards per game on the ground is what they're giving up. And the Bills are giving up 117. So, and what do I know about these two teams? They, they have a lot of really good running backs will be playing in this game. So I see it, see it as a kind of a low scoring affair uh, based on all of that. Um, but I do think that, that um, Melvin Gordon, Philip Lindsay, I think they're going to have really big games here, obviously. And I think Bradley Chubb, Justin Simmons and company, that defense, I think they're going to do just enough to actually cover in this game. But of course I have the bills winning. So there you have it. You think I'm crazy, Jeff? No, I no, I think it's going to be a it's it's going to be seven, eight, ten point game. I don't think in any no way it's more than a ten point spread. You know how it gets in those kind of games: late field goal, they don't cover. You know, late field goal, it goes the other way. So I, again, I'm glad you made me feel better because like nobody can pick the point totals like you can, and <laughs> I really think that the under is going to hit too. So I'm going to take the Bills to cover and the under. I love it. I'm going to take. Uh, Denver to cover, but I agree with you on the point total, the under. So there you have it, guys. That's our picks. Let us know in the comments below what you think. Jeff, Saturday night football again. I love it. At 8.15 p.m. Eastern time, the Panthers are going to head in to face the Packers at Lambeau, who will definitely be playing in a Packer environment for sure. Okay, temperatures are going to be in the low 20s with gusty winds of up to expected like 14 to 15 miles per hour. So it's definitely something betters want to think about and consider. Uh, now the Panthers, they're coming off of an ugly loss to Denver. Uh, uh, they gave up four touchdowns to Drew Locke. Uh, 34 points total that defense gave up to Denver, who only made it into the red zone twice. Okay, so that tells you a lot. On the other hand, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams, they're rolling, obviously. Aaron Rodgers is a close second favorite right now to win MVP this year. And his 10-3 and three Packers are now the odds-on favorites to win the NFC Conference at plus 650. Aaron leads the league's best offense. He's throwing three touchdowns a game in seven out of his last eight games. The lines have shifted a bit here. They opened up at nine, and by Sunday night, it was eight and a half. Okay, I've even seen eight on one side. Jeff, who you got in this game? Well, this is the Ben Blackmore Bowl because our producer, Ben Blackmore, is the biggest Packer fan I have ever met. And I've met some big cheeseheads, but he, <laughs> is, he is Packers through and through. And I'm going to break his heart a little bit here because I think the Panthers, when you look at the Panthers, the Panthers, you know, they haven't won a lot of football games, but they make them, they make most of them really close. And, you know, you're talking about, uh, eight and a half point spread. That's a big spread. And this this is a Panther team with Teddy Bridgewater at the controls that they'll they'll complete some balls. They're getting healthy at the right time. And for the Packers, this to me again is a trap game. And you know you, you know it's it's difficult 
I know they just won the division. They're the, they're the better team by far. I think the Packers will win, but I think that the, the Panthers will cover that eight and a half point spread. And I like the under at 51.5. Yeah, um, I agree with you a million times on the uh, the Panthers covering. Uh, Green Bay's obviously, of course, Green Bay's going to win this game, right? But the Panthers will cover because that's literally all they do is cover, especially when they're underdogs on the road. They're five and zero oh covering, okay? And in total, they're seven and three against the spread as an underdog point blank period. So it's like no Christian McCaffrey. No problem, really. Uh, backdoor Teddy is what they're calling him now in the gambling community. And him and Mike Davis, Robbie Anderson, they keep betters covered for sure. Plus, I think they're they're getting DJ Moore back for this game, I believe. So I think that they'll do just fine offensively against a Green Bay defense that has made some bad teams look pretty decent. You know what I mean? So I agree with you on that. Now, the point total, oh, the point total. It, I'm actually, I'm taking the over in this one. Is that what you had, Jeff? No, the over? Not. You had the under, okay. Well, I just looked at the Packers. They're averaging as a team almost five touchdowns a game. And plus a team like the Panthers, who I just said they're probably getting another another piece back with uh, DJ Moore, I believe. Um, they've gone over in four of their last five games. And with Green Bay's defense being what it is, I don't know. I see a high-scoring game. I just do. So I'm going to go with the over 51.5. You look you look perplexed about that. Tell me a little more. Tell me a little more, because I'm now you got me wavering a little bit on that on that under. I got you thinking it. Well, you better make, as my grandma used to say, uh, potty or get off the toilet. She didn't say it <laughs> just like that, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I, I'm so, gonna take you over. I, I think you convinced me. I'll take you over. I think yep. you. Over. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. We're both taking uh, backdoor Teddy to cover for the Panthers in Green Bay, and we like the over on the point total, over 51 and a half. Let us know in the comments below what you think. All right, Jeff, the uh, the 12 and one Chiefs are two and a half point favorites over the 10 and three Saints, okay? Uh, we were just saying over the break, I really wish that they would flex this game. They're playing it in a mid-afternoon game on Sunday, and they should really, really, really consider flexing it with the Steelers Bengals, because that ain't gonna be fun to watch. But I digress. Um, this will be the first time the Chiefs have been to NOLA since 2012. Uh, the last time they played each other was 2016, so uh, there's that. The Saints, they just lost to the Eagles, okay? And they love to have Drew Brees back for this game against the Chiefs. But by all accounts, all the Adam Schefters of the world and everything, everybody thinks Taysom Hill's going to get the start and they're going to let Breezy uh, rest again. Now, Patrick Mahomes last week, he went way over par, okay, against Miami. He threw three interceptions. Um, his offensive line had struggles with the Miami pass rush early on, but still somehow by the fourth quarter, Chiefs do what they do, and they had a 20-point lead going into the fourth quarter despite three interceptions. Blows my mind. Um, now, this is probably going to be a good matchup no matter who the Saints put out there at quarterback. But the limitations that they have with Taysom Hill are very real and becoming more and more evident, right? So, Jeff, I have two questions for you. I've been looking forward to talking to you about this since last week. Um, first question is, who should the Saints start at quarterback? Because I'm not even talking about Drew Brees. But you see the limitations that you have offensively with Taysom Hill. Is it enough to keep up with Kansas City? Or should they consider starting a gunslinger in Jameis Winston? who you know will throw touchdowns, but he might also throw a million interceptions and put the ball back in Pat Mahomes' hand, which you don't want to do. Like, it's a doozy right now. So I want to know, who do you think they should start at quarterback coming from a coach's perspective, and then who do you like in this game? Well, again, you got to discount Breeze with the health thing. And, I, I, you know, Sean Payton made a couple statements after the game about how bad their defense was, and they gave up 200 yards rushing and all that. But the reality of it was, O.J., the offense turned the ball over twice on their half of the field. And you can't do that anybody against anybody and win. So the offense was culpable too. I, I just really think that and now enough film has gotten out on Taysom Hill that people have started to figure out his game and, and did some things. I think I thought the Eagles did a great job of game planning against him. I know Kansas City will do the same thing. Jameis, on the other hand, he does give you the throwing game. You got to remember, if you compare Miami and you compare uh, 
the Saints, the Saints have better skill. They have better weapons offensively than what Miami was scoring points with against the Chiefs in the, in the second half of that game. So I would, I would, if I was Sean Payton, I would start with Hill, but I'd sprinkle some of Jameis in there and let him, let him deal the ball around a little bit because, you know, he's got, you know, Michael Thomas, he's got Emmanuel Sanders. I mean, they've got Kamara. Yeah. They're a very good football team. They're a very loaded football team. And they haven't played well offensively lately. I'm going to take the Chiefs in this one because I think two and a half is that's almost a little bit uh, that's almost a little embarrassing for the Chiefs. I mean, you're an 11 and one football team and the best, most balanced football team in the National Football League, and you're going against a team that lost to the Eagles last week and didn't look very good, gave up 200 yards rushing and all that, like we talked about. I think the Chiefs will cover. And I'm going to go with the over in this because the you know over under is 51 and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. It's kind of perplexing to me as well. I agree with you that it is kind of embarrassing, and it's moved a little bit because whenever I first started show prepping, um, I was seeing four points. They were they were four point favorites, so it's it's moved all the way down to two and a half in a very brief amount of time. Uh, with that being said. I agree with you. I'm taking the Chiefs for sure. And once I saw it move down, I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I'm definitely doing it now. But I'm I'm assuming people are thinking that the Saints might have a chance with and I think they should they should start Taysom Hill for this reason and this reason only. Um, he runs, right? You can you can run him a lot. And they also have Alvin Kamara. They can run the ball really well. They stand a chance because you're limiting. Uh, you're limiting the Chiefs' time of possession, theoretically keeping the ball out of Pat Mahomes' hand. You're theoretically limiting turnovers. And also, if there's a weakness in the Chiefs' defense, I've said it before, it's it's against the run. So you kind of think maybe Taysom Hill's skill set uh, kind of goes better against the Chiefs. But I digress. I feel very comfortable taking the Chiefs uh, to cover their, their two and a half points. And the point total... That's what I'm a little shook on. You said you're taking the over or the under? I'm sorry. I'm going to take the over. 51, I'm going to take the over. I'm going to take the over on that. I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking of taking the under in this one. I think that the Saints defense is going to show up at home, um, especially after being embarrassed last week. And I... I don't know. I don't think Taysom's going to be able to put up that many points. You know what I mean? Even though I think he's the better option over Jameis Winston. But I, I think all the points are going to be scored by the Chiefs. And I don't think that they're obviously going to put up 50. So I'm going to go with the under. This is bizarre. This is a bizarre turn of well, events, that's a Jeff, for us. Right there. <laughs> it is. It is. But I like it. It just makes it more fun. So there you have it, guys. We both have the Chiefs. Very confident about the Chiefs handling the Saints. Jeff's taking the over in the point total. And for once, I'm taking the under. Let us know in the comments below what you think. All right, everybody. It is time for the PicksWise Underdog of the Week. It is by far my favorite section of the show and what we are the most successful at. Jeff's record is lights out. I don't even remember what it is at this point anymore, but it's really dang good. So, Jeff, I'll let you get us started, okay? Who is your PicksWise Underdog of the Week? Well, this was the one that we talked about off air, and I really, both of us agree on this one, I think. When you look at the Washington football team, and you mm -hmm. watch them on tape, they are physical, they are disciplined, they play on every side, every phase of the offense and defense and special teams. They play very, very physical football. Seattle has struggled lately. Uh Bookies have the Seahawks as five and a half point favorites. I think that's ridiculous. Um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't even, it, the game's in Washington. Seattle's got to travel all the way across the country. There's so exactly. many things about this game that make me say Washington. And so I'm going to take the Washington Football Club as my dog of the week. Yeah, absolutely, Jeff. Agree with you a hundred percent. I so much. I'm going to put some personal money on this game this weekend. Um, the Washington defense is just lights out. I mean, lights out. Uh, it's. I really feel like DC next year will be an actual contender. And here's the thing about that game, Jeff. It they're still in contention to win this division. So this isn't a throwaway game for them. They're going to be fighting hard. They're at home in the Seahawks defense is atrocious. This all stacks up to, I mean, I don't expect them to win this game. I pick Russell Wilson every week, but I definitely think DC can cover that point spread. 
Um, I'm going to go with another team that is in the exact same division, the NFC least, as we called it early in the season. I'm going to go with the Eagles, who I don't know if they've found a new franchise quarterback. I don't know. But what I do know is that the team is reinvigorated, and they are also still in contention for this division. And I, I see it all the time. You get a new quarterback in for these teams, and, it, you know, it may not pan out in the future. It may pan out in the future. But early on, when you make a switch like this midseason, it seems as though other teams have a hard time adjusting their game plan because they don't have a whole lot of film on you. They don't know how you're going to play. And Miles Sanders, he can run the ball down your throat. The defense can play. The pass rush can play well. I just think they're six and a half point dogs to the Cardinals. The Cardinals are a very talented team, but they really play up and down to levels of competition. Uh, I think this could be both of these teams really need it. I think it's going to be really tight. And I think the Eagles are going to cover six and a half. I'm not touching the money line, but they're going to cover six and a half. So you agree or disagree? No, I like it. I like exactly what you said. And I think there's some real, real, real keen thought put into that because the reality of it is when you look at J- Jalen Hurts, OJ, there were no pre there's no preseason film on him. Right now, there's only one game of film for defensive coaches to put a game plan together against. Yeah, you could go back and look at his college film at Oklahoma, but, you know, that's college football. He has not played at all. I think that really helped them last week, and he, he did exactly what you said. He gave them belief. He gave them juice. Right. He gave them a sense that they could go out there and they could compete. And so much of pro sports, especially pro football, comes down to belief. And, and I really thought that the Eagles were a completely different team, completely energized, completely more aggressive, completely more into the game with Jalen Hurts at quarterback. So I, I like that pick. Yep. And Dougie P can do some things with backup quarterbacks. I don't know what, why, when, how, <laughs> but we've seen it happen. Stranger things have happened. So it's 2020. What do you know? Uh, there you have it. That's our picks wise underdogs of the week. Uh, I love Jeff's picks with uh, DC covering five and a half points against Seattle. And I have the Eagles covering six and a half points against Arizona. Let us know in the comments below what you think. And let us know about any dogs you guys have. Let us know. Help me make some money. I need it. All right, Jeff, you ready to get right with our picks wise parlay of the week? I'm ready to get right. We need to get right. We need to get right. So you're getting two picks. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I probably should have let you have the two picks, but you're a gentleman and you let me have them. So I'll get us started it's for our Picks Wise Parlay of the Week, where we give you guys a parlay that hopefully will make you some money, make us some money, and you can insert it into a larger parlay or just run run with us, all right? Let's get it. Let's get it. I've got the Titans, okay? Right now they are 10.5-point favorites over Detroit, and I absolutely love it. Look, Matt Stafford, I know that right now I'm watching TV, listening to the radio all day. They're saying Matt Stafford might play, but probably won't. Look, the season is done for the Lions. This man is playing with, like, cracked ribs. And it's a very painful injury from what I understand that he has. Um, He's not going to be playing, I don't think, because it just doesn't make sense. Uh, No Kenny Galladay. And a Lions defense that can't stop my grandmother. Okay, so the game is in Tennessee. So I'm actually surprised that the spread isn't even greater because I know the Titans can play up and down to levels of competition, but it ain't going to happen in this game. It's just not because Matt Stafford isn't going to be there to do it. It's going to be Chase Daniels. Okay, and it's just it's not happening. They're going to run the ball down the lion's throat. Whatever the prop bet ends up for Derrick Henry, uh, the over on rushing yards, take it. Okay, they're going to destroy them. Um, A second pick is because it's a parlay, I'm going to go with this, okay, and I'll explain my reasoning. I'm taking the Chiefs' money line, okay, over the Saints, and the value there right now is minus 200, and I really like this because normally minus 200 in a single bet, it's not that great of a value, but it is for something that I feel so confident in, in the Chiefs beating the Saints this week because they show up to big games, games that matter, and they know this one matters, and they're gonna they're gonna win, okay? I just I promise you, book it. And like FPI has an implied win probability of the Chiefs winning this 67%. So I'm actually surprised that the value here with this pick isn't worse. But you're gonna parlay it, and it's gonna end up making you some money. Jeff, who you got? Well, you know, I looked at a couple games, and and uh, I've kind of backed off them, backed off of them, backed off. Them. The game that I think really uh, the the point and a half. 
that you look at between the Patriots and the Dolphins, that makes me want to take the Dolphins because that's basically a pick 'em game. We've seen that uh, the Patriots are so offensively challenged. Uh, last year, the Dolphins went in last week of the season, and you know New England still had things to play for, and they beat New England in New England. They're not afraid of New England, and so I really think that the Dolphins will will win this football game. I I understand Belichick has like this incredible record against rookie quarterbacks, but you got to also remember that there are an awful lot of Patriots down there in Miami, an awful lot of yes. guys. That- that understand and can help this young quarterback out. So I, I think Van Noy is going to play again. I think that helps him a great deal. Uh, I'm, I would tell anybody that's interested in playing this bet straight up that you better watch the injury wire all the way till Friday because there are a couple guys in Miami that I heard are nicked. Uh, but I like the Finns. I think they're playing really good football right now. They gave, they gave, gave Kansas City everything they could handle and more. And this New England Patriot team is not uh, is not anywhere near the talent of the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, that's going to be a defensive battle. But I love that you mentioned that there are Patriots that are now over there to that Dolphins team. And I love games or prop bets, you know, usually offensively, if it involves those players. And when they play their old team, like I'll take them every time because they really, really get the adrenaline pumping for those games, right? So I love your pick. I feel really confident about our parlay this week. Can't wait to talk talk about it with you guys and find out if we made some money. I'm going to roll with it, all right? I'm trusting you, Jeff. There you have it, guys. That's our PicksWise Parlay of the Week. We got the Titans covering the spread. I've got the Chiefs, money line, And Jeff has the Miami Dolphins. He likes to cover. And, yeah, they're point and a half dogs to so cover, obviously, and then obviously money line. So there you go. There you have it. That's our PicksWise Parlay of the Week. Let us know what parlays you got going on. All right, everybody, get ready for primetime, baby. Sunday night football, the 9-4 and four Cleveland Browns and Jeff's 5-8 and eight New York Giants are going to ah. face off, okay? Uh, the point total is set at 44 right now, and the Browns are five-point favorites. Um, the NFL flexed this game to the primetime slot as it was originally slated for the Cowboys and the Niners, and not going to lie, I'm glad that they did. Um, It'll be a short week for Cleveland as we just witnessed one of the greatest games of 2020 a few nights ago when the Browns played the Ravens. Um, The Browns, they lost that game, but it wasn't because Baker Mayfield couldn't get it done, okay? He was playing very well, and he brought that team back, and then they lost it. But all that matters is that he brought the team back. He's finally figuring out how to put a team on his back and carry it, not just rely on the run game, okay? Um, On the other hand, the Giants. They fell out of first place in the NFC lease. They got blown out by Arizona. Daniel Jones played, although he was questionable coming in to that game with a hammy. Regardless, he definitely wasn't 100%, and it showed. And now he is very uncertain to play this week versus the Browns. Um, but the game is at home for them, okay? Jeff, can your Giants cover? Well, here's the thing. If, they don't, if, if Daniel Jones doesn't play, Colt McCoy will be the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And Colt McCoy is an ex-Cleveland Brown. So he knows those guys on the other side. You talked about that uh, the last game we talked about, that how important it is to always know who's coming back to try and play against their old team. You know that Colt McCoy will be extra prepared for a start against the Cleveland Browns. I just don't think that they have the firepower against Cleveland. Cleveland has shown, now this is a Baltimore defense they went through last year, last week, a Baltimore Raven defense that has been historically one of the better defenses in the league. And this year, early on in particular, was playing extremely good football. They took them to the woodshed and hung 40 some on them. Now, I think the Giants have a good defense, yes, but they don't have the defense that the Ravens do. And I think Kevin Stefanski will refocus his football team. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take, and you always call them my Giants. I'm going to take my Browns over my Giants this week in what I think will be a game that actually goes over the 44. Okay, you like the over here. Um, look, I think that the Giants' run defense gives them a chance to be competitive against the Cleveland Browns, whether or not it's Daniel Jones or it's Colt McCoy. Of course, I like the odds of what I'm about to tell you much better. 
with Daniel Jones at like 90%, um, mostly because I know that he can run the ball. Every time I take a prop bet on him running the ball, he chooses not to. But in the games that they win and that they do really well, and it's usually because he ran the ball. And we just watched Lamar Jackson run the ball a lot on the Browns. And so I think that if DJ plays that the Giants are going to kind of look at that and also think, okay, well, maybe we should get our quarterback's legs involved. But I don't know. I, regardless, I think that with Colt or with DJ, I think that they can cover at home. I do, because they're the fourth best run defense in the league. And I just said Baker can put a team on his back finally, not rely on the run. But trust me, you don't want that all the time, okay? They're still going to run the ball, and they're going to do it well. But, yeah, no, I just I think the Giants are going to cover. Um, the 44 points, I think it's low. Just do. I'm going to go with the over in this one. Jeff, am I crazy? Not crazy, because, again, you know, 44 points isn't, isn't a lot of points, but uh, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about how many the Giants can generate. And you know that the Giants, I think, I think Cleveland will score three touchdowns in the game, kick mm-hmm. a couple field goals, and that'll be the margin of victory. I just don't know if the Giants can get to 17 or 18 or 20 points to, you know, hold up their end of the bargain. Right, right. Well, I'm still going to run with it, but I'm probably crazy. There you have it. I have the Giants covering. Jeff has the Browns handling the Giants and covering on their part. And I'm taking the over. He's taking the under. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. And uh, you can tell me how crazy I am. Jeff, Monday Night Football. Are you so excited to watch the Steelers (laughs) play the Bengals? I know I am. I can't wait. No, I'm just kidding. This is terrible. But... It's going to happen, and maybe something crazy could happen in it because it is 2020, right? Um, The Steelers are favored by 11.5 points going into Cincy to play in the jungle against the banged-up, almost highly endangered, almost extinct Bengals. Uh, The point total, though, is 40. Weird contrast there. 11.5 point favorites, but a low point total and 40 points. Now, look, the Steelers may have lost two in a row, uh, but... This is a two-win Bengals team, Jeff. Is there any, any way that you could ever fathom the Bengals covering in this game? The only way is if Pittsburgh's bus gets lost on the way, on the way to the stadium because the Bengals are in trouble. Those two games they won were with Joe Burrow at quarterback. They, they have got to recognize that they've got to put some weapons around that kid when they get him back healthy. They are nowhere near as good as they need to be to be any kind of a contender in that division. The Steelers, you know, I I can understand on one hand that 40 point total because the Bengals Bengals are going to have a hard time scoring on the Steeler defense. And the Steelers have had a hard time scoring. They haven't they haven't scored four touchdowns in a game in month. So uh, but I think the Bengals are the perfect remedy for what ails the Steelers. And that means the Steeler offense will come out and they'll hang some numbers on the Bengals. This is, an, this is a rivalry game. These two teams don't like each other. There's a history of not liking each other there that goes back years. So I'm going to take the Steelers to cover the 11 and a half, and I'm going to take the over. You're going to take the over, huh? Well, I'm definitely taking the Steelers also to uh, to cover that spread because, honestly, this, the Bengals have one of the worst worst offensive lines in the league, if not the worst. Um, and what do we, what do the Steelers have? They have TJ Watt and a bunch of dudes who can blitz and, and rush the passer and just get to him. So yeah, I, I feel bad for whoever's, whoever's going to play court. They don't even know for sure what, who's going to play quarterback for the Bengals, I think in this game. Uh, so I feel bad for him. Uh, the point total though, 40 points, man. That's, that's, that's a lot. I mean, all 40 would have to be scored by the Steelers, I think. And it's a divisional game. So I just don't think that's going to happen. I'm actually going to go with the under, which is ridiculous because this is a ridiculously low score, but it's going to be so one-sided that it's gross. So I don't know. There you have it. We both have the Steelers covering easily on this prime time Monday night. Fantastic matchup. And uh, just going with the over and I'm going with the under. Oh, 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 oh. You, you hit on something right there that I had. Of course thought. I did. And, well, you know, I think the Steelers' defense is going to get extra possessions. They'll enter, it, I, I would not be surprised if the Steelers' defense doesn't score a touchdown themselves. But, again, whether the Steelers' offense 
can get them 35, which is really what they're going to have to do because I don't think the Bengals are going to score. I don't think the Bengals will move the ball the length of their arm against that Steeler defense. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned T.J. Watt. They got to it. They got, you know, Cam Hayward. They have got a bunch of guys that can get after the quarterback. So I'll, I'm going to go with you. I'll ride with you. You convinced me again because I know you are the queen of the point total. I am going with the Steelers, and I am going with the under. All right. Awesome. I love it whenever I can change a man's mind with, <laughs> with just my logic. It's fantastic. There you have it, guys. I, I agree with you completely. The Steelers are going to blow them out the water. They're going to cover, and we're going with the under just because it's a divisional game and can't imagine since he's putting up any points. And I also – don't see divisional games where somebody scores 40 or 41. So let us know in the comments below what you think. Bengal Nation, don't at us. Don't be mad at us. Sorry, you are what you are. It's okay. Joey Burrow will be back to save the day. Let us know in the comments below what you think. All right, Jeff, I hope you're feeling confident because I'm feeling really confident about my pick in this segment. It's time for the PicksWise Lock of the Week. We're both going to give you our best bet of the week. Use it to your advantage, okay? Um, I'll get it started really quick. I'm just, look, flat out, Texans, they're going to lose to the Colts in Indy. Um, Indy will cover. They are seven-point favorites. They will absolutely cover. Um, T.Y. Hilton prop bet, if you can get one. I haven't been able to find them yet, but because uh, it's so early in the week, we film on Wednesdays, but go with it. T.Y. Hilton destroys the Texans every single time without fail. Go with it. The Colts are just way too good. There's too many players suspended and or injured for the Texans. Uh, just just roll with it. Jeff, what you got? Well, I'm going to tell you what. I, I, I'm going to go back to that Titans game. I really like that pick. I really like your pick there with the Titans. I think 10 and a half, no Matthew Stafford on the road. Run defense that struggled all year against Derrick Henry. Uh, the Titans are starting to play. And, you know, uh, they got a lot of, they've got a lot to play for. Uh, Tannehill's. Slinging it around the yard. I like that team, and I like that that game right there. I like that one. Absolutely. No disagreement from me there. And these two teams are certainly having a little extra incentive. They're both in the same division with the Colts and the Titans. they both going to want to win this week. So there you have it. That's our PicksWise Lock of the Week. Use it. Makes money. Texans, they going to lose to Colts. And he got the Titans beating the hobbled Detroit Lions. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Jeff, thank you so much for joining me today all the way from England. I know it's really late, so we'll let you get out of here and get some get some good shut-eye. Um, everybody, thank you. Please don't forget, if you're not subscribed already, do subscribe, like, share, comment. We want to hear from you. We love it. We appreciate you watching. Please, 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 please gamble responsibly, and we'll see you next week.